Hello, this is Dr. Brooke Patterson, and this lecture covers chapters one through two. When we think about assessment, we need to think about it as an ongoing process that involves both a comprehensive health history and physical exam. Collecting all this information from the database allows the nurse to make clinical judgments and or nursing diagnoses about the patient as a whole. It is important that the database is factual and organized so you can obtain a complete and thorough assessment of the patient's health status. Keep in mind that as data changes and a patient's condition progresses or improves, assessments and conclusions may change as well, changing your potential outcomes and priorities. The purpose of health assessment is multifactorial. It involves current health status, risk, educational needs, and many other factors needed to develop a plan of care. An actual and thorough review of these findings assists us with prioritizing the patient's needs. Also, when thinking about a plan of care, it is imperative to think about the individual goals of the patient, which may be very different than our own nursing goals or the goals of other patients. That is why it is so important to involve our patients in developing the plan of care. This also helps the plan of care to become more realistic. Later in the semester, you will get the chance to practice completing a health history form on a family member or friend with confidentiality in mind. When you complete a health history, you may be either starting from scratch or adding and modifying a previously documented health history in the electronic health record. Either way, all areas need to be at least addressed as so many things can change in just a short period of time that could alter the trajectory of your priorities and care. Some of the components of a health history include past medical history, past physical issues, past psychological issues, social history, cultural history, spiritual beliefs, environmental influences, and developmental level. In all aspects of nursing, it is important to think about the different social determinants of health. I don't want you to memorize each of these, but it is imperative to understand how each one of these traits can affect a person's health status and or access to care and resources. This includes an array of related factors that affect a person throughout their lifespan. These factors may include neighborhoods, health, social and community factors, education, and economic stability. Evidence Evidence-based practice indicates that poverty has the greatest influence on health status. When we talk about the physical exam, we are referring to a structured head-to-toe exam that helps us identify changes in a patient's body system, possibly discovering abnormal findings versus validating normal findings and providing reassurance. Clear and concise documentation is so important. We need to make sure we document exactly what we see and hear as concisely, but, as all, but also as descriptively as possible. We must be careful not to document our assumptions, but what is actually seen and heard. This gets much easier as you practice. When thinking about patient assessment, you must think about priority levels. For example, a patient coming in with chest pain would be your first level priority as opposed to a patient with mild congestion. First level priority problems are defined as emergent or anything that is life threatening. In your nursing career, you will be collaborating with many different team members, including but not limited to healthcare providers, other nurses, patient care assistants, and therapists. In collaboration, these healthcare team members will be an essential part of determining the priorities of patient care. Remember, oxygenation or airway and breathing will always be your top priority concept in nursing. There are often circumstances that may delay a comprehensive health assessment. For example, a critically ill patient in the ER that could be struggling to breathe or that has chest pain may not be able to answer assessment questions. It would be most appropriate to stabilize this patient prior to engaging in conversation and obtaining a history. Likewise, depending on a patient's presentation, the typical order of health, health assessment may not be followed in situations when seconds and minutes may matter. Some emergent conditions may warrant prompt intervention. This slide helps to see the difference in nursing care and medical care. Although there is some overlap, the nursing model is focused on the diagnosis and treatment of actual or potential human responses, while the medical model focuses on diagnostics and treatment of disease. 
It is important to understand the expansion of the concept of health. Health includes holistic care, such as incorporation of one's mind and body. As you can see, the nurse has many roles in health assessment. Along with health promotion, prevention, and education, prioritization is so important and can affect each of these categories. It is imperative to understand and accommodate for different age groups and recognize the physical and mental limitations of a health assessment. For instance, while assessing an older adult, it may be necessary to adapt and accommodate placement and positioning based on the physical limitations of the patient. Pain is another concept to consider when thinking about adaptations. Health promotion, disease prevention, and education should always be tailored to the patient's age group, physical and mental capabilities, and also thinking about the social determinants of health. It is also important to keep in mind what is most important to the patient. We may see certain things that we feel like should be the priorities in patient care. However, this may not be the case and the patient may have different needs. While safely providing care, it is important for us to take into consideration the things that mean the most to the patients and think about how these could be included in their plan of care. As I mentioned before, things can change quickly, forcing us to reprioritize and possibly restructure the plan of care. We will have to be willing to be flexible to adapt to these changes. Picking up on these subtle changes may allow for the diversion of a medical decline. So we are not just going through the motions of an assessment, we are always assessing. Simply just popping in to bring a patient some water, we can inspect and note their mental status and level of consciousness. Are they anxious, talkative? Do they seem at ease? Are there personality changes? Assessment isn't so formal and methodical all the time. This slide just reemphasizes what we discussed previously. The major takeaways are to remember to think about the social determinants of health, the detection of subtle changes, taking advantage of teaching opportunities if appropriate, and continuing the cycle of reassessments. We are going to discuss the two types of data, subjective and objective, and why these pieces are important to include through the entire encounter. Subjective symptoms are exactly what the patient says they are. This is also an important part of the health history as far as the chief complaint and review of systems. You will document exactly what the patient says, not your interpretation of what they are saying. Objective data covers signs, findings, and results that you actually observe or measure. These are two different examples of subjective versus objective data, with subjective data on the left and objective on the right. The example states, Miss G is a 54-year-old veteran who reports pressure over her left chest like an elephant sitting there, which radiates to her left neck and arm. Note that the documentation did not state, patient is having chest pain. While that is most likely the case, we do not make assumptions and we chart exactly what the patient says. The objective example on the right states, Mrs. G is an older, overweight white female who was pleasant and cooperative. Height of 5'4", weight 150, BMI 26, BP 160 over 80 in the right arm, sitting, heart rate 96 and regular, respiratory rate 24 and regular, temperature 97.5 degrees Fahrenheit orally. I wanted to make sure I listed old cart in this lecture as this will be something you use for the rest of nursing school. The information found in this mnemonic will assist you with writing your history of present illness nursing notes. Having all these components in your notes helps providers start ruling out and or ruling in specific diseases or patient problems. It is essential to document all of these findings because it helps expedite the care of your patients. The next few slides just define what each section of old CART stands for. I will also give an example as well. Onset, when the sign or symptom begin, a specific date or time or approximation, location where the sign or symptom is located, chest, left side, duration, how long the sign or symptom has been present. For example, one day, comes on for about 30 minutes, then eases up. Characteristic symptoms. 
what the symptom feels like, how it is described in severity. For example, stabbing, six out of 10 pain, associated manifestations. What else is happening when the patient experiences the sign or symptoms? For example, shortness of breath. Relieving factors, anything the patient has tried to relieve the symptom or symptoms. For example, lying down, or you can even state aggravating factors like exercise. Treatments, any interventions the patient has previously tried. For example, Motrin, but it did not help. Remember, collecting data is subject to error. It is important that we listen as carefully as possible without making assumptions or stereotyping. Always ask open-ended questions to help with receiving more information. If they say yes to a specific question regarding pain or symptoms, follow up the yes question with old cart. Keep an open mind, always include worst case scenario and gather appropriate data to rule in or rule out this case. Analyze any mistakes and confer with colleagues to clarify uncertainties. This is where your team comes in. Remember, you are not on your own.